Chapter two, test review, part two. Number one says plot the points and a line of fit for the data. Sometimes we see this written as a table, but here it's written as ordered pairs, but either way, it doesn't really matter. Let's plot the points. First point is zero, one. Two, five. Six, 11. 10, 19. 12, 22, 14, 30, 16, 33, 20, 41. And then the last one we'll have to save for later. That's going to be our prediction. So we want a line of fit through there. You're not going to be able to hit all of the dots, but just do your best. Draw a line that, that hits as many as you can. Um, that's pretty good right there. Okay. Plot the points. Draw a line of fit. Part B says find a prediction equation and use it to find the missing value. So the way we did it was we went to Gold Adder and the math sites. And then we went to the site that says linear regression. So click that, it's gonna take you here. Enter in all the data into this table and hit calculate. When you scroll down, you're gonna see the equation right here. 2.018x plus 0 0.07143, right there. So I'm just gonna round off to three decimal places. And my prediction equation is y equals 2.018x plus 0 0.071. That's my equation. Now I need to use that equation to find the missing value, and that's where this 50 comes in. We want to plug in 50 for x and see what y equals. So 50 is going to go right here. So we go back to our calculator, And we want to do 2.018 times 50 plus 0 0.071. 100.971. So we get 100.971. Right there. Missing value. Number two, evaluate the function. Well, when we find h of four, all that means is plug in four. So we take this equation and we're gonna plug in four. Use a calculator if you need to, but this one's not too bad. Eight minus two is six. Describe the transformations. That's talking about shifting and flipping. So describe the transformations. This is going to be left three, and this is going to be down Three. So you may recognize that this is a parabola shape. We know it's a parabola shape, but it's going to be transformed by shifting left three and down three. We can tell this one's a V shape, but this is a flip. The negative sign in front is a flip, and then this says go left one. Those are the transformations. Number five, when you graph each function, you have to take it one step further. Um, we know this is an absolute value. The bars mean it's a V-shape. But we've got a flip. And this says up three. So it's a V-shape that's flipped and shift up three. That means if you shift up three, that's where the vertex is. It's going to look like this, but that's where the vertex is. So an absolute value is going to have a 1, 1, 1 pattern, meaning I'm going to go down 1 and right 1, and down 1 and right 1, like this. Keep going if you want. Keep doing more dots. Draw a nice, smooth graph. Next one. We can tell number 6 is a parabola. It's got an x squared, so it's a parabola shape. But this transformation is right 1, down 3. So if I go right one and down three, I'm, I'm here. That's the vertex of my parabola. Now, 
Remember parabola shape have, have the one through five pattern. If you don't remember one, three, five pattern, you could always plug stuff in and plug in like negative one, zero, one, two, three, something like that. Plug that in, make a table if you want to, but I prefer to do the one, three, five pattern. I'm gonna start at my vertex. I'm gonna go up one and over one and up one, two, three and over one. You keep going, you go up five, up seven, whatever. But there's my parabola shape. Next one's a V-shape. But this is a multiplier. Okay, it makes it steeper. Instead of my V-shape having a 1, 1, 1 pattern, we're going to multiply by 3. It's going to have a 3, 3, 3 pattern. So let's talk about that. First of all, we know this is right 1 and this is down 1. So if we go right 1 and down 1, that's my vertex right there. But it's steeper. This 3 is a multiplier. You can think of it as a stretch if you want to. It's going to make your V-shape a lot steeper. And how we're doing that is we're going up 3 and over 1. And up 3 and over 1. It's going to look like that. V-shape. Next one, square root. We know it's that shape. We can see left, four, up, three. So left, four, up, three. There's my starting point. It's got a one, three, five pattern as well, but it's going to the right. So you go over one and up one, and over three and up one, and over one, two, three, four, five, and up one. There's my shape. There's my eyebrow shape. Make sure right here is the last point. Do not go across it. Number nine, we're talking about inequalities now. Inequalities mean there's going to be shading. So we look at this symbol, and it says greater than. And so you should really quickly know that this is a line, actually a dotted line, and greater than means we shade up. It's going to be a straight line, dotted, because it doesn't say equals, and greater than means we shade up. So just graph your line. You've got your y-intercept point at 2, and your slope is negative 3, 4. So go down 3 and right 4. And you've got a dot there. Or reverse the pattern up three and left four will get you the same thing. So we want a dotted line and we've got a shade greater than. So remember greater than means up. So if you go to the line and go up that's where we shade. Make it look nice. What you're trying to do is color in all of the solutions. Next one, 4x plus y is less than or equal 5. Most people are probably going to want to ISO the variable, or ISO y, that is. So subtract the 4x, y is less than negative 4x plus 5. Most of us are e uh, find it easier to graph this way. It's still a line. We can see it's a line. And we know it's a dotted line, and we're going to shade less than. Okay, So we start at 5. That's my y-intercept. We give it a slope of negative 4. Think of it as a fraction, negative 4 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Down 4, right 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. Dotted line. And we're shading less than. Sometimes people get messed up on this, but less than is always down. Okay, so if you just go to the line and just drop straight down, that's where we color. Okay, don't think of it as to the left. That's not a very good way of thinking about it. Think about it as below the line. After all, the line extends. Okay, if the line keeps going up, 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 um, you know, we're below the line. 11, you've got to recognize it's got an x squared, so we know it's going to be a parabola. This tells me it's solid, and we're shading greater than, so we're shading above. So it's going to look something like this. Ooh, time out. No, there's a flip. So it's a flipped parabola with a solid line, and if we're shading above that, it's actually going to look like this. Look at your transformations. That means left 1 and up 2. 
So left one and up two, we've got right there is the vertex of our parabola. Parabola is going to have a one, three, five pattern. So go down one. Remember, it's got to open down this time. And down one, two, three. Solid line. And shade above. Looks like this. Okay. Next one. This one's another parabola. Again, you can recognize because of the x squared. The greater than symbol tells me it's going to be um, a dotted line. And we're going to shade up above it. So it'll look something like this. But we need to find the vertex. That's where that negative b over 2a formula comes in. Negative b over 2a. So here's b. So we've got negative negative 4 over 2 times a is 1. That's the number in front of x squared. That says 4 over 2, which is 2. My vertex is the point 2 comma something. And I'm going to get that something by plugging in that 2. So we plug in a 2 in for x here and here. We can use our calculator again. So remember, anywhere you see an x, you put parentheses. So if we're plugging in 2, we'll go 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 8 is 4. Vertex at 2, 4. 2, 4. Right there. So it's still got the 1, 3, 5 pattern. It's still a parabola, so I'm going to go up 1 and up 1, 2, 3. Looks like that. We already said it's a dotted line. And we're going to shade up. Thirteen, fourteen, both look like absolute value graphs. Um, we can see that number 13 has a flip. And this says it's going to be a solid and shade less than, so shade down. So there is no left-right shift. Remember, I always think about what makes this 0. And in this case, it is 0. And this means up 2. So all we're doing is shifting up 2. We've got a flipped absolute value. Remember, absolute value has a 1, 1, 1 pattern. So down 1, down 1. Looks like that. Solid line. Shade less than, so shade down. Next one. It's an absolute value, but I can see that that's going to make it a dotted line. No equals means dotted, and less than means shade below. This thing's going to look like that. So your transformations say left 2, down 3, left 2, down 3. Puts me right there. That's the vertex of my parabola. It's got a 1, 1, 1. So up 1, up 1, up 1. Do that. Okay, we want a dotted line. And we want a shade less than, means shade below.